Will that play a factor as the bell goes to begin round one? Thurman in the red, white, and blue with Garcia in the black and white with yellow. Thurman said there would be no feeling out process. There is no feeling out process. And when these guys... They're, they're usually very careful at picking their spots. Keith Thurman has been down once in his career. Garcia has never been on the canvas, but they are throwing with bad intentions early. And that's why it says... Has recorded four first round KOs all in his first seven fights. But looking to faint, walking down he Garcia. Garcia oh. unloading with that lead left hook. One of his calling cards, and he just stopped Thurman with that left hand. Thinks he can do the same. Oh, but there's a sweeping left hook by Thurman. Garcia back. Wants. He, yes. he wants to counter, especially if you try to exchange the left hook, which is his big punch. Right hand. In the fighter meeting, Keith Thurman acknowledged our analysis as Danny Garcia there on the belt line as he has to be careful not to target the peninsula below the equator as you hear those shots land. So things settling down a bit here in the second stanza, but there's a nice right upper coming inside by Thurman. And a left hand that lands for Keith. One time Thurman. Overhand right. And another right. The fighters were talking trash, which I, you know, which we all do. Oh, man. There's Hulk. Garcia doubled over. Thurman to the occasion on the sport's biggest stage. Oh, but there's another thudding. Even just using those rangefinder jabs has helped oh, him in this fight. That was a left hand shot. and a left hook and a right hand by Garcia. Great body work by Garcia. Garcia rolled with and the head movement of Thurman, timing the jab, avoiding it. That shot, avoiding it ready. We are through three in BK. Official score: Steve Farhood. How do you see the fight? Mo, I have Thurman ahead two rounds to one. The second round was the. They've taken turns being the aggressor. Oh, good right hand to the body by Thurman. Nice one, two. Lead left hand, but what a counter by Thurman. Backing up Garcia. Certainly done that, and that left hook was a big one by Thurman. Garcia has a big movement. Nice combination by Thurman in the final seconds. Have more knockouts than Tyson throughout his career. With 22, he's halfway towards equaling. You're just following him. You gotta step to the side and step, step to the right. Beautiful. Good 16. Seen on CBS as well. And now Garcia looking to dig away at the body with the left hooks. Now Thurman trying to establish the jab in this fight. We're starting to see it now as this fight unfolds. Yeah, he has gotten back to it. Oh, the left hook of Thurman. We've come to the end of round five. Garcia with a flurry. Neither man has been as effective offensively as they would like. Oh, sweeping. It's Danny Garcia is leading in terms of number of punches he's thrown. He's up by about oh, good. eight now. See what good combination by Garcia. A nice head movement. Good. Thurman throws his jab. I tell you what, like, and oh. more than more than once, it kind of puts this man to sleep. Danny Garcia could show this kind of foot movement. He boxed well against Matisse. Lead right block. the good point this could be an important round it's been a very close one there's a left hook that landed by Thurman as he avoided the attack by Garcia Garcia though rolling as well and of round seven there's power in this weight class yes good exchange again Thurman not scoring with any of those shots and well Garcia misses as well so the question for Garcia as we move on is he has had some trouble at the end of fights uh, in the encounter. <laughs> 12 for 12 here at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Right uppercut lands for Thurman. All due respect, he was laying his jab a little bit more than Thurman is here. Thurman with the right uppercut and Garcia misses with the right and missed with the do Land that big punch. Both, let both hands go. And Al Thurman, known as Warren, to pivot away. That was a very good body punch. And, and a good left hook upstairs by Thurman. And the other just from all angles, various yeah. angles.
That's a good point. Right, missing with a lot of those punches as well. That one bounced off the arm, and Garcia swings widely. Wildly as we're down the stretch here in round nine. And they are swinging for the fences. I see him, the confidence. He's thinking the whole time. He's moving the whole time. Did then landed the left to the body. Stepping to the left or stepping to the right. The counter right hand by Garcia. I love the concentration. Lean left hook, right uppercut lands for Thurman. We are headed to the championship rounds in this, the 10th welterweight title unification fight in history. He's trying it because he has to. And yet, but the thing about it, a champion has to close this show. Well said, one of the greatest champions in the sport, and now they're trying to do... Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, we go to the scorecards. We have a split decision. <laughs> Judge at ringside, John McKay scores about 116 to 112 in favor of Keith Thurman. <laughs> Judge Kevin Morgan sees about 115 to 113 in favor of Danny Garcia. And judge at ringside, Joe Pasquale scores about 115 to 113 in favor of the winner. He is still undefeated. He is now the WBA and WBC Unified Welterweight Champion of the World, Keith Walter. Here we go, Palazzo and Thurman. I tell you, for a loud night so far, we've had a lot of key help Colazzo. Would, I wouldn't do that for either fighter. This is a bonus fight plan nugget here. Yeah, really. That is on the outside that could change the course of the game. Or in this case, I don't know how much positive is in the mind of Colazzo. Bernardo Osuna. Thank you, Margarita's right eye. You know, he still has some doubts, some bats in the belfry, so to speak. Some doubts in that mind. That right now, Thur This is why you can't outbox Thurman. Look how quick he is. Look at the hand speed, too. You see the athleticism and the angles as we come to the end. In other words, it's not just about the ability. It's about what's in the mind, what's in the temperament. And the mind and temperament of Thurman mind is to do this to box and look for spots to be careful but I'll tell you when he gets into gear it is fun to watch in his last four rounds he saw on national TV against Guerrero after he scored the knockdown here he put some punches together I haven't seen it so oh, Colosso came forward cut the gap and now an exchange here in that neutral corner been able to win at the A or A plus level which is the level Thurman's at. So. Combination from Keith Thurman right back to a southpaw right jab from Colazzo. I have to decide to go for broke. 
Berman was touching that time as he took the angle. Two punch combination, placed two right hands to that left. Drop the left hand as he does it. That could be a very effective punch for a southpaw. See Teddy's scorecard and the fans at home. You, the viewer at home, three rounds to zip for Keith Thurman. You can score along with Teddy. Palazzo pressing a bit with Thurman against the ropes, missing with that. Advantages to Thurman. He likes the box. He likes to use the ring. Picking a spot that time, trying to split the guard. End of four here in Tampa. Southpaw comes out July 24th. We have a Southpaw former titleist in the ring right now as Keith Thurman is teeing off on Louis Colazzo. Good series of an offense. Team so far from Keith Thurman, the only complaint he has is on him. It's a great intellect. Slightly more of a rule. Make two mouthpieces. Why? In case you lose one. Or maybe they should make a new rule. Bring two belts. Palazzo with his best work. It looked like it hurt him in the body a little there. Went to the body and had success here at the end of round five. And now he's trying to chase down the unbeaten Keith Thurman. Looked like he hurt him a little bit to the body. And that's the right place to go. Downstairs and he did. Look at Colazzo on the attack against hurt. Keith Thurman. Thurman's looking to wrap up. That's where you want to go if somebody's moving. Take the air out of the tire. And that's exactly what Colazzo. Earlier tonight, we saw an upset knockout win from an underdog. Again, by Hurt and Thurman, but no bell. Hey, as long as we got a good fight in the ring, let's go. Colazzo reaching forward with that left hand. Thurman doesn't make him pay the price. Now on the inside, going to that belt line, and a short left hand on the inside from Colazzo as Thurman comes back, sweeping with a left hand that was off the mark. Colazzo takes. Will stop and pop from Thurman. Right eye of Louis Colazzo as this round comes to an end. And a right hand from Keith Thurman as Colazzo fights on. And the blood does stream down. Tell us Asamenos, the referee, has ruled that that was caused by an accidental clash. Oh, sharp right hand from Keith one time. I have to do his job. He's been involved with head clashes. Oh, good sharp punch. When he went to the side there by Thurman. It's Palazzo. Fight based on you that cut. You I'm could shocked. hear the exchange between Dr. Carlos Rodriguez, he, he Telus Asamenos, and the fighter, the fighter Louis so Palazzo. Thurman celebrating. Louis Palazzo has stepped in to wave off the contest at one second of the eighth round for your winner by technical knockout and still welterweight champion, Keith. One time, Thurman! You know, what an here. odd way to pull it off that way, Teddy. I should keep this fight clean at all times, protect yourself at all times, and what I say, you must obey. Good luck, touch them up, and God bless. Touch them up. Great career. Here we go. Pac-Man. Yeah, I said, listen, Matisse going to come to me. <laughs> pac has been in there with some of the biggest and the best. King Matisse down. This fight. No, I expected him to use a lot more footwork to stay away from Matisse's power, but uh, he's not giving Matisse much respect at this point. Time! has been done. Bubo was always in camp. With Bubo. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I was surprised to, to hear that. Hey! Yeah, told us he thought Matisse was going to come to him. Boxing skills, and that he they was going to use more of his actual boxing instead. Matisse said he used to be more of a boxer, but got some some bad decisions that didn't go his way. He said I had to change my style. There's a counter left from Matisse. He didn't have a lot behind it. Of Benny Pacquiao's 
recent success in this fight has been the right hand. He's been landing a nice left hook, uh, right hooks and, and jabs over the top. Matisse, you see a nice shot there, right there, right on the jab. Still being cautious. He has a dangerous man in front of him. Matisse. Left hand the whole time. Pacquiao with his trademark smashing of the gloves together to pump himself up. And he's so far. Good body work there by Pacquiao. Coming back as he throws a right hand. It certainly seems so. Using his right hook to, to slide that left uppercut right through the guard of Matisse. He'd been using that right hand the first two rounds. Set Matisse up perfectly. He ducks to his left. Eats that uppercut, gets put on the seat of his pants. Beautiful shot. Didn't see it coming. As I always say, the punch you don't see is the one that hurts you the most. He's having his way here. Really, really picking his spots. Using that right hand. Love the use of the right jab. Something special about that. In the fight with Lubin. Good jab. Matisse land that straight right hand, which I was saying is going to be his key to victory. And then we see uh, Manny Pacquiao's best punch here. Straight left hand to the body there, and then one up top. And then we've got another left hand that Pacquiao landed later in the round. Slips, throws his combination, and then looking to set up that left hand again. Be first. Left. Started with a jab. Be cautious. This is a man that is dangerous for all 12 rounds. Oh, and a left hand. A good one. And it landed right on the butt. And there's a the right hand. Finally, Matisse finding some success. The best round so far for Matisse. That's what oh, what? Jab. Lands the jab there. Flicks another jab and wings a right hook over the top. Slicing right hook seemed to just nick Matisse under the eye. One more look here. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 it's shot in the temple. A lot of times that can... That can Championship of the world on the line. Low and a low low. Low. Right. But it may not be hit against the wall. You can sense the... I don't know if it's fear, but the concern... Before time before he got knocked out. Staying very composed, using his right hand. Making Matisse nice and weak. Uh, Matisse caught him there. But Pacquiao handled it very well. And it's still good at changing his range and making you miss and also reach. And now, just like he did in the last round, Matisse starting again. And a left hand. And a power shot as well. And now Matisse firing back. Maybe catch me, um, Pacquiao is just coming. Still trying to find his rhythm. Much needed seconds to break. Yeah, uh, Matisse was trying to counter underneath one of the shots of, of Manny Pacquiao, one of his combat. Green come true, said it was a great honor. Speed, saw his reaction, his footwork is still there. That was the one thing about the Jeff Horn fight. He showed good footwork, he showed boxing skills today because he's looking very strong in there. Oh. because of the punch. Again, walking Matisse into that left hand, and he threw it right at the middle. It wasn't the hardest shot. Who's going to say no? I think we'll see exactly what we've been seeing all night. Manny Pacquiao using the right jab. Uh, Lucas Matisse dipping forward into his right, right into the left uppercut, timed perfectly by Manny Pacquiao. Manny!
respect you. And no counter blocks. Send Oscar to the Hoya to protect. So feeling that process here in the first three minutes, Pacquiao right on his weak shoulder. As there is again right there. So Pacquiao was coming forward and he was trying to force the action and entertain the crowd. However, in the process of doing that, you could see that he was kind of lunging off balance each time he did so. So this obviously could present AB with some chances to counterpunch. And he did at times land the left hook and the counter right hand. And then in the early middle rounds, Adrian Broner started to engage a little bit more, picking up the pace as he should have. And Pacquiao was still trying to launch forward in typical aggressive fashion, just trying to just get those combinations started. Going into the fight, Adrian Bruno started to land some counter punches with a little more regularity, but it still was just a case of Adrian Bruno's single counter punches. Manny started to switch it up by going to the body to set up some of his attacks and he was doing well with that. In the seventh round, Pacquiao caught him with his trademark left and he started landing some devastating punches. I was like, damn, is he going to get him out of there? In the 8th round, Brona done well to keep it a little bit more level than the previous round because he was in real trouble at that point so it was relatively calm after that. And then going into the later rounds, Pacquiao got off some good work and he was engaging in some fiery combos. On the other hand, Adrian Brona was kind of letting the fight slip through his fingers because he was just sticking to his single shot counter punches and it was frustrating to see because Adrian Broner just like everyone always said he just doesn't let his hands go. The championship rounds the energy was still quite competitive with AB offering some punches at a certain point but Pacquiao the 40 year old man didn't let his foot off the pedal and he was still engaging in some exchanges. fight went the full distance and Adrian Broner he ran straight to the ropes and he looked like he thought he just won that fight easy but the judges would be the one to decide who the winner was. The winner was announced and still 